Welcome to our online worship at the Mayville and Campbellsport United Methodist Churches. Today is the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. In my message, we will explore the parable of the rich fool and hear Jesus' teachings on greed. Please pray with me. Bountiful God, who gives to us all that we need to sustain our lives, open our hearts today to hear your words of compassionate justice, that we may focus on the ways in which you intend us to live and be of service to you by serving the world. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Our opening hymn is At the Name of Jesus by Caroline M. Noel. Let us sing together. Our New Testament reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care, be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool! This very night, your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The 
The scripture passage that I just read is called the parable of the rich fool. Did you know that money is a very popular topic in the Bible and especially with Jesus? One web article that I read cited more than 2,300 verses on money, wealth, and possessions. Jesus spoke about money roughly 15% of his preaching and in 11 of his 39 parables. It was Jesus's most talked about subject. It's a topic that most pastors probably try to avoid, except of course, when we must during the annual stewardship drive. I don't really mind talking about it too much though. I think that goes back to my pre-ministry days when I was the finance chair and treasurer at our Sheboygan Falls Church that Chris and I attended. I spent a great deal of time working with the church's finances, recording, giving, paying the bills, and doing the payroll, etc. However, we refer to money as wealth or possessions. It's often one of those things that we just don't talk about with others. It's often considered taboo. Why is talking about money something that we avoid? Is it because Jesus seemed to talk negatively about it? Or maybe our parents avoided talking about it with us as we were growing up. Those things might be part of it. But I think that we tend to think that our money is our business. If we talk about it, we might come across as if we're bragging, or maybe we might even show some of our vulnerability. On the other hand, I'm almost certain that most of us worry about money at some time, whether it's simply buying groceries or paying our monthly bills, or how we finance an auto repair or pay for a vacation or college education for our children. It's one of the things that married couples argue about the most. Now, I'm not encouraging you to start talking about your money, your wealth, or lack thereof with others. I know for me personally, there are many, many people that have much more material wealth than I do, and many people that have less than I do. However, I do believe that we all have something to learn, or at least be reminded of from Jesus's words. This passage began with a command to Jesus. Teacher, Tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. Doesn't it seem pretty bold for someone to say that to anyone, much less to Jesus? Now, Jesus avoids getting in the middle of a family squabble, and instead he uses this time to talk and teach about greed. What is Greed. In dictionary.com, greed is defined as an excessive desire, especially for wealth or possessions. Christianity.com tells us in the Bible the words greed, greedily, greedy, and greediness are always used to describe the selfish motivation of a person. Jesus tells us to take heed, to be on guard against greed. Greed of all kinds, money, fame, possessions, attention, compliments, gifts, another person's time, power. He proclaims that one's life is not just more than these, but one's life does not consist 
in the abundance of possessions. In that one sentence, Jesus is telling all that greed is not good. He's also telling the man that requested half of his brother's inheritance to reconsider his demand. He is truly telling him to examine his priorities. The world we live in today places great value on wealth. Many of the heroes that people identify with are wealthy in some manner. Bill Gates, the founder of Microsoft, is one of the world's richest people. Star professional athletes make incredible sums of money for their athletic prowess. Famous entertainers receive great attention, acclaim, and money. Many people are in awe of their wealth, their power, their abilities, and even what they say. We tend to think that things are very different from, for us than they were for previous generations, even previous cultures and eras like the time of Jesus. However, I think that while things are definitely much more advanced in many ways today, than they were in Jesus's time. The temptations, the trials that we face haven't changed all that much. Greed is as much a challenge today as it was in Jesus's day. Then Jesus shares the parable of the rich fool with the crowd. The rich man's land produced abundantly He needed more storage, so he built larger barns to store his grain and possessions. He was very proud of himself, self-satisfied. He decided to kick back and relax and enjoy his wealth. And then comes the climatic moment when God responds to the rich man. He says, God says, you fool. This very night, your life is being demanded of you and the things you have prepared. Whose will they be? All that the rich fool had greedily stored up was of no use to him now. What does this teaching from Jesus mean for us? Should we disavow all possessions and give all of our wealth away to help others that are more needy than us? The answer is most likely yes and no. Let's take a look at Jesus' last words in the passage. So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves but are not rich toward God. Remember last week we heard from Jesus in the Martha and Mary story that first and foremost, we should put God first. That while Martha's hospitality and service was vitally important, it was Mary's discipleship that was the better part. In today's passage, Jesus is again proclaiming that our relationship with God comes first, that our treasure should be stored up in heaven, not on earth. That at the end of our lives, the wealth and possessions that we have accumulated will be meaningless. However, the actions and deeds that demonstrate our love and care for God and for others are what God is calling each of us to do. The founder of Methodism, John Wesley, believed strongly in Jesus' teachings on wealth. He lived his life with that in mind, giving away almost all of his earnings throughout his life. In Wesley's famous sermon titled, The Use of Money, Wesley taught, earn all you can, Save all you can, and give all you can. Let me repeat that. 
earn all you can, save all you can, and give all you can. I think that this is at the crux of what Jesus is teaching, that money and wealth are not necessarily bad things, but rather, do you use your wealth to glorify God? Wesley believed that by giving all that he could to those in need was first and foremost putting God first, putting God at the top of his priorities. He lived out this belief with tremendous compassion and generosity for others. Friends, I encourage all of us to take heed to Jesus' teachings. Jesus wants us to put God first. And if we do that, our selfish desires will not be much of a problem for us. If greed of wealth and possessions is not our priority, then in doing God's will, we will be more inclined to pursue service, justice, generosity, and selflessness. May we all strive to follow Jesus' words and wisdom each and every day. Amen. Please join me in an attitude of prayer. Lord, we stand in line for tickets, books, and gadgets. We place our energy in gathering things that might be of monetary value at some later point and justify this action by stating that it is for our children's good. When we have gathered enough, we tend to relax and say to ourselves, that it is all right for us to eat, drink, and be merry. We have done our best, but have we? Have we given thought to how we have given our best in service to others? Have we spent so much time gathering and building bigger containers for our trinkets that we have overlooked the good we could have done? We are indeed foolish people, Lord. We want everything, yet the most important things are not the trinkets, but the good that is offered to others. We have gathered here this day asking for your healing mercies for people and situations that impact our lives. We place our trust in your compassionate love. Help us to gather peace, joy, justice, and hope as the gifts to be given abundantly to all. Bring us again to your mercy and care. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Friends, thank you for worshiping with us today. Please receive the benediction. Place your life in the hands of God. Go in peace, and may the peace of God go with you always. Amen. Thank you.